And we will call this special meeting of July 31st to order. Uh, we have an expanded agenda, so tonight I will read the entire agenda off so everybody's clear about how tonight is going to go. Before we uh, ha entertain a motion to approve the agenda and then I go through it, I believe Commissioner Col Coleman has asked for just a brief moment to make a short statement. Good evening, everybody. Why? Well, <clears throat> Why well, I have no further comments on the false allegations that have been recently leveled, <clears throat> recently leveled at me, or the biased reporting that has been written about me. I do want to express my sincere regret that these allegations have become a distraction to our city. We have so many wonderful things happening in Newberry. And it disappoints me to know that this has taken the public attention away from all the positive things. I want to apologize to all the city staff who have been <clears throat> unfairly pulled into this situation. And I want to apologize to my fellow elected officials who I know have, to, have had to deal with this. Most importantly, I want to apologize to the residents of the city of Newberry for the negativity that they've had to endure too. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Coleman. On behalf of the elected officials, we appreciate that statement. Okay, I'll, I'll go ahead and read through the expanded agenda here to make sure we all understand exactly how tonight's gonna go. The format is for each presenter to be given a 30 minute time slot, 20 minutes to present with 10 minutes for the commission questions and responses. We're gonna ask that only one firm uh, be present during each presentation so that there's no advantage or disadvantage to going first, second, or last. Um, and so we'll ask when uh, another firm is up to present that the other firms go uh, leave the commission chambers. We're not going to live feed this. We will record it and broadcast it afterwards. That way everybody's presentation is, is there and there alone. Um, the, alpha, the presenters will be in alphabetical order. Uh, first, we'll hear from the Athletic Competitive and Recreational Sports Management. Then we will hear from Champions Park of Newberry, Florida. And finally, we'll hear from Rad Sports. We will not have opportunities for public comment at the end of every presentation, um, but we will have public comment at the end of all three. Each commissioner and uh, before you has two scorecards. You have a working Scorecard, that is your rough draft. You've got some space on the side to take some notes. Um, and then you have a final scorecard. You need to sign both of those scorecards. Both of those scorecards will eventually become public record. After all three, you can do the working one at, as a presentation is going at the end of the presentation, right? We'll do the final one at the end of all three after you've had a chance to ask questions, hear the public's comments. You can go back and you can look at the working one and make sure you still like the way you scored it or change it appropriately. So after all three presentations, we will have public comment of three minutes for uh, each commentator. Um, and this will happen before the commissioners submit their final scores. So this is public comment. It's not intended to be an opportunity for the public to ask specific questions about individual presentations with an expectation that the presenter will answer. So you can make your comment about it. Uh, but we're not going to call the presenters back up to engage. Then the commission will have, will close public comment. The commission will have an opportunity to discuss presentations collectively prior to you filling out your final scorecards. Then you'll pass your score sheets <coughs> down to the city clerk and the director of finance uh, and administration will tally them and establish numerical rankings, one, two, and three. They're going to do that in the city clerk's office and we will recess the meeting until those tallies are complete. We'll then reconvene the meeting and the city clerk will announce the scoring tabulations and rank the firms one through three. The commission can then enter into deliberations to discuss the rankings if they wish to and work towards a motion. Staff recommends that the motion be along the lines of, and this is printed for you in the expanded agenda, approve rankings of the respondents for Champions Park Professional Management Services, RFP, as follows. Number one is the top firm, number two is the second firm, number three is the third firm. And be authorized staff to negotiate a contract with the top ranked firm and bring it back to the city commission for approval. If the negotiations with the top ranked firm fail, staff would notify the city commission and begin it negotiating with the second ranked firm. That would continue until the contract is agreed upon and approved by the city commission. 
Once a motion is made and seconded, the commission can then discuss the motion. At that point, we will have another opportunity for public comment on the motion on the floor. Then we'll vote on the motion if approved, move to comments portion of the meeting. If not approved, we'll return to step 10. Uh, I would like to remind all of the participants that uh, after we have ranked these one, two, three, the blackout period will still continue until a signed contract has been negotiated. So once the signed contract is negotiated, the blackout period will be lifted until that the number two and three firms still have an opportunity if we can't work out a deal with number one and number two. Uh, and we'll take final comments and we will finally adjourn. Do I have a motion to approve the agenda as it has been read? Motion to approve the agenda. Second. I have a first from Commissioner Glanzer, a second from Commissioner Martin. Any questions or comments about the agenda or the procedure? Everybody clear with the difference between your working draft and your final draft? If you make if you choose to make notes on another sheet of paper, make sure you sign those notes. Those two will become part of the public record eventually at the completion of this project. Mr. Mayor, uh, do you want us to allow the complete presentation and then questions, or are you, is there going to be, or do you want to allow interruption during the presentation? Well, they've got 30 minutes. Okay. <laughs> uh, so I would say we can treat it a little organically. If you have a clarification question, you don't understand the point they just made, it might be beneficial to stop them right there and make sure you understand. Otherwise, it might be better to hold off until the, the end so we can ask them all those questions. Does that make sense? Sure. Any questions or comments on the agenda from the public? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. aye. Motion passes unanimously. Okay, our first presenter is going to be athletic competitive recreational sports i'd like to give a couple minutes for any of the other presenters who are in the room <coughs> to just step into the hallway there if you would please and the acr folks can make your way to the podium hopefully we have your presentation there it is well done <coughs> While our first presenters are, are making their way down here, I, I would like to remind and request the audience that while they're giving their presentation, let's please try to respectfully listen to their presentation uh, and try to hold down the questions, comments from in the back if we could so we don't distract them from their presentation. Is our microphone on here, Ms. Judy? Yes. Thank you. All right. Anybody? affiliated with the presentation, the people who are doing the presentation still in the room? All right. Mr. Manager. Do you prefer that we set the timer for 30 minutes and just know when the 20 minute mark is up or do you <coughs> want to set it for 20 and then 10? I'd, I'd recommend 30. Let's set it for 30. I'll remind the commission that, and the presenters. Okay. Then you guys have a, a light bulb out. We've never had a 30 minute time on before, but I think uh, maybe it can go to yellow with uh, three minutes to go, Amari, does that sound? That gives plenty of time to wrap up any last questions or comments. Sound acceptable? Remind me, that's what we did for the first one. We'll do it for, for everybody. So we'll set it at 30. It'll start blinking yellow at three. When the red light turns on, we have exhausted our time period. And I'd remind the commission uh, that we'll still have another opportunity to, to ask questions at the very end okay and with that are we ready to go with the presentation Amari all right we're ready so ACR folks whoever wants to lead us off let's make sure that the pointer before you begin <coughs> I should have clarified only the city commissioners who are voting commissioners have scorecards in front of them I do not have scorecards in front of me I'm a non-voting mayor so this is the tally sheet will be comprised of the five voting commissioners. I think that was the only comment I forgot. All right, ma'am, introduce yourself to us. We're good. Um, I'm Ann Korluski. I'm with ACR Sports Management. Thank you so much for having us this evening. We appreciate your time. I'm going to, in the interest of time, I'm going to just get right into it. And I'm going to very quickly just kind of tell you who we are. Hopefully you've all had a chance to read our proposals and you've seen our resumes. But quickly, um, <coughs> William J. Hooper, he's our president and executive director. He's a Master's of Science in Sports Management from the University of Florida, Bachelor of Science in Mathematics. He is a veteran of the United States Air Force. He is the former Executive Director and President of Gainesville Youth Baseball. He's a volunteer coach for both our recreation and our travel leagues. He is the 2017 Albert Ray Macy Award winner, and that is for uh, service to recreation inside of the city of Gainesville. And he's also a certified National Alliance for Youth Sports Administrator. 
his role with our group is to provide the overall leadership to position Champions Park at Newberry at the forefront of the industry. He will lead the development of the strategic plan to advance the park's mission, and he will oversee the company operations. Our Chief Operating Officer, Mark Burford, is a Master of Education in Educational Leadership. He is a Bachelor of Arts in History from the University of Florida. He is currently the Dean of Students at Newberry High School, where he started in 2007 as a teacher. So he's been there 11 years. He's a board member of Gainesville Youth Sports, which encompasses Gainesville Youth Baseball and Gainesville Fast Pitch. He is a volunteer coach of both our rec and our travel programs. And he is the former junior varsity head coach and assistant varsity baseball coach for Newberry High. Mark's role inside of the company is to manage the operations and facilities of Champions Park, coordinate and supervise all facility subcontractors, coordinate all facility usage and rental agreements, and coordinate with the rest of the team to make sure that we're advancing the agenda of the park. Myself, Ann Korluski, I will manage the administration of the business. I have a Master's of Science in Tourism Development and Marketing from the University of Florida a Bachelor's of Science in Event Planning from UF. I'm the current Director of Executive Events and Public Functions at UF Health. I also currently serve as the Chair of the Alachua County Tourist Development Council. And I am the current President of Gainesville Youth Sports. My role is to manage the finances and the business of Champions Park, to comply with all required reporting to the city, to the county, to the state, and then to coordinate with the rest of the team again to advance the agenda. With that said, let's talk about how we plan on getting there. So we're going to work from the pro forma that was inside of our proposal and just going to hit some highlights on it. But to start with, let's look at that total income. It goes across. It's you know, based off of a lot of research, not, not a lot on, on what was there. We didn't have a lot of access to records. but from our research and what we know of the industry is where we base that. So and what we're saying from our research is that currently baseball and softball combined to rank as the most participated team sport in 2016. Baseball and softball, youth baseball and softball is the only recreation sport that is growing. Every other youth sport is declining. So it's there. It's a direct result probably of the MLB's Play It campaign that they started in 2015. Since then, we've seen incremental increases in participation in baseball and softball to the tune of between 10.2% to 18% between those years. Thus, our growth. The, the, the business is out there. There's no reason why you shouldn't see growth in the usage of a park when you're seeing growth in the actual playing of the sport. On top of that, millennials are more likely at 34% than their predecessors at 25% to pay for recreational outlets for their youth. That's a major increase, it's just still increasing. They have, on average, families who attend travel tournaments over the summer spend about $2,000 a family at a location on a travel tournament. So where does this income from? Income, our tournament income, I'm not going to get into the specifics of how the tournaments are going to come in. Will will manage that when he speaks later on. I'm just talking to you where we came up with these numbers and where it came from. Visiting tournaments, these are, for the most part, going to be um, travel tournaments, but we, there will be some rec tournaments in there. So this isn't, we're not just speaking travel ball, we're just speaking tournaments in general. We know there's a requirement of, I think from what the city said, 12 tournaments a year, or the county contract, you have to have 12 tournaments a year. That's, it's, that's a pretty low number, given how many tournaments are going on and our driving distance from all of the major metropolitan areas in Alachua County. So if you think where all of the airports are and how convenient we are to all the airports, where that seemed convenient for them to come to us. So we can draw from South Georgia all the way down to the Orlando Tampa area with a very easy drive up to a tournament. Um, hosted tournaments. Now these are tournaments that ACR would host inside of the park. So and these um, combine to come up with that 165,000. Non-tournament income of 100,000, and this is sponsorships. So sponsorships we think is a, an opportunity that may not um, be taken fully advantage of right now. 
as ACR, we have the benefit of being um, invested in Alachua County. We have sponsors who are literally sitting there waiting for us. We do know that we have, we have a couple of meetings out for major sponsors. We think it's important that we get a major sponsor, a title sponsor of the park, I think would be a feather in the cap of the park. Um, and we have those entities inside of Alachua County that should be doing that. And, in and on top of that, there are so many opportunities for sponsorship. I'm part of my current job, I manage sponsorships um, for UF Health. We manage sponsorships for GYB. So sponsorship is something that we would take on in-house to start with, as opposed to resourcing that out. Rentals, that's, that's pretty clear. Anytime that there's not a tournament in there, and a tournament would be a rental, but it would count under the tournament income, which is a different percentage to you guys. But other rentals for camps, things like that, that we would allow for. And then concessions, which we, our intent is that concessions would basically run through the park solely. City fees. This, this is the part that should be fun for y'all. Um, so what we have here is range, it's a scaled on the income. 5% of all tournament income goes to the city of Newberry and 20% of all non-tournament income. Based on our projections, that's the tune of just shy of $180,000 to the city over the course of the five-year contract. And that estimate is probably um, conservative. Expenses. So our operating expense ratio, we based on 55%, and that's basically because currently um, we don't have a full understanding of the state of the park and what needs to be done right out of the chute. But um, I think ultimately we could get that OER down to more of the national and industry standard, which would be closer to between 40 and 50% OER is what really what we should be running. But as anybody would do when they're making a, a budget, we've estimated our expenses high and our income low just because that's the most responsible way to do it going into something that is still a bit of an unknown to us. Finally, our administration plan, and this is where my role comes in. And basically, my job is to make sure that there is on-time reporting to the city of Newberry and to Alachua County as is contractually required in that contract with um, the Tourist Development Council. And given my current role at the Tourist Development Council, I'm intimately aware of how that functions and where that money comes from and what the requirement is. Um, accurate and thorough bookkeeping. That's a priority for me. It's what I do for a living. I, I manage budgets on a day-to-day -day basis to the tune of several hundred thousand dollars a year that I'm spending out. And then finally, attendance at applicable city and county meetings, that the Champions Park has a face at everything from these commission meetings to the county meetings to the TDC meetings to the Gainesville Sports Commission meetings to meetings throughout the state of the different um, travel associations and rec associations. So in, in a nutshell, that's the business piece of what we intend to do. Um, afterwards, if you have more questions, I'm happy to go more in depth. We did cover it a lot more in depth in our <coughs> proposal, but time just doesn't allot for that. Thank you. T time that out well. You're right at the 20 minute mark. How are you? I'm uh, Will Hooper, and uh, I'm going to discuss how we're going to incorporate <clears throat> the facility on, on based on uh, what Ann discussed on, as far as the budget. So first and foremost, we're going to discuss travel ball tournaments. As you see, there's multiple industries right now with travel ball. It's really taken storm over the years and is really kind of taken off. Uh, I've only listed a few up here. Um, some of these travel ball organizations I've already been in contact with just to kind of gauge their interest of this area and the facility and, and a lot of them are really looking for a home, a place to call home in regards to travel ball. Uh, a lot of the organizations do like to visit multiple different cities. Um, so there, there's a lot of opportunities and not just to be committed to one organization in regards to travel ball, <clears throat> but there's opportunities to kind of achieve multiple different organizations to kind of fulfill not only the minimum 12 requirement, but, but more, than, more than that per month, per year. Our goal, kind of manage the facility, 
is to achieve 18 to 24 tournaments per year. That's just in baseball. So in regards to softball, we feel there's also just as equal opportunity. Uh, although softball is not as big, it's not as participated at the moment as baseball is. There's a lot more boys playing baseball versus girls playing softball. But uh, we think the same organizations with travel ball, uh, we look to see anywhere from six to 12 per year. And our overall goal for this facility, we think we can achieve anywhere from 24 to 36 tournaments per year. Uh, anywhere from doubling to tripling the required amount of 12. Travel ball is, is gonna be our first and foremost, and obviously will be the first opportunity for organizations to come in and manage. Um, outside of travel ball, Everybody knows what recreational ball is. A lot of people downsize recreational ball and, and, and almost blow it to the side like it's nothing. Well, recreational ball is the foundation of, of everything. Travel ball wouldn't exist if there wasn't recreational ball. At some point, the majority of kids, if not all, that played travel ball, at some point in their career of playing sport, playing baseball, started at the recreational level, whether that's just t-ball or the machine pitch. But at some point, without recreational ball, you wouldn't even have the opportunity to, to have travel ball. So we think both are very important. <clears throat> um, we've been in contact with Cal Ripken and we're looking to make Champions Park the Cal Ripken Babe Ruth headquarters of North Florida. Um, they're, they're looking for a home and they're looking for a home to host their state and qualifiers, regional qualifiers. They're looking for a place that they can call this, this is the Cal Ripken facility. And we think we can coincide that with the travel ball and they not kind of overlap each other or, or really interfere with each other. The time frame of Cal Ripken tournaments are typically in the summer, where a lot of times the travel ball organizations have kind of died down some, whereas the majority of those are in the fall and the spring. We were looking to host three rec ball tournaments. Over the past three years, I've either directed or assisted with roughly around 10 tournaments myself. So I do have experience in regards to running a tournament. I know what it takes, uh, not only as far as getting teams involved, marketing it, but also the facility and what we need to be able to, uh, to run it. So we're looking at one per fall, one per spring, and also an all-star warm-up. So these will be outside of the travel ball tournaments. And of course, travel ball would take priority in regards to the rec tournaments. As you can see, just in our district, uh, there's 14 leagues over across five counties that operate out of Florida Babe Ruth. Um, a lot of these leagues have issues with fields. There's a shortage. As the sport is growing, as Ann stated, the more kids are playing baseball, there's no funds out there to, to build more fields. Um, we're lacking fields. So we've, we believe Champions has the ability to, to house a lot of these individual games during the week, save our tournaments for weekends, and then during the week, we can house a lot of these tournaments that are spread out so far where people don't want to travel you know, on a school night. We think Newberry is a, is a good centralized location where people can meet in the middle and play a game and still not you know, take up their normal facility that they can use for practice for the other teams that are not playing. So we think there's a big advantage in regards to uh, both rec and travel ball. Now outside of rec and travel ball, we're looking to host camps. Uh, we want to host camps throughout the year, of course, spring break, summer, Christmas holidays. Um, pretty much any time there's non-tournament weekends. We want to keep the facility active and keep it going. Uh, we don't want to sit it, see it sit empty. And our goal is to ha host at least one camp per month. Now, in regards to camps, to give you an idea, it's not always going to be ACR actually doing the instruction. You know, we're just going to manage it and... and, and advertise it and get people to come in. But, but we're looking at former professional athletes, uh, college students that are actually going to school to, to study the field, some athletic trainers. We're looking to bring in different people for different opportunities to kind of run different camps and kind of focus on different skill sets and give people within our community an opportunity to kind of work on different areas. Outside the camps, obviously the field rentals. Uh, this is very important, you know, with people needing places to play, the lack of fields across the, the county, um, this is a great opportunity to make available, not just for Gainesville, not just for us, you know, we want to make this available for all organizations, whether it be private, travel ball, 
uh, recreational leagues, anyone that's used it before, currently, now, uh, we want to keep that available for everyone. Now, the future of champions. We feel there's a lot of growth with champions. We feel there's a lot of opportunity. And, and right now, our focus is going to be maintaining with baseball and softball and, and keeping the current facility we have <clears throat> and, and looking to add bleachers, increasing more seating options to make it a little more fan friendly uh, and, and make the whole experiment of, of coming to champions exciting. We want people to not only come here, but we want them to come back. And, and, and that's our goal. Now, we read that there's an uh, additional 40 acres pretty close to champions. And we think in long-term goals that we think there's an opportunity to add something to that. And what I mean by that is there, there's, there's a lot of things that can be discussed in regard to what should and shouldn't go there. But we truly believe that there's an opportunity to host some kind of multi-purpose indoor facility or, or outdoor, uh, depending on the funds, that can really house all sports and not just baseball and softball. And, and our goal is to make Newberry the sports mecca of, of not only this area, but the state of Florida, maybe even the entire southeast region. So uh, we're, we're very, uh, we think the future is bright in this facility. And, and it could be a huge impact um, on this community. And I'll turn it over to Mark Burford. Thank you. I'm uh, Mark Burford. Um, I've got about two and a half minutes till we get to the 10, the ten minute mark. Should I just, should I be that quick? You can certainly yield some of your question time if you feel like the end of the presentation is what I important. Just did. What did we? What did we just do? Oh, there you go. All right. There so I'm I'm just going to talk a little bit about how we're going to support the community. Uh, as a as an active member of the community for the last 12 years, I've grown to love Newberry. There's no place I would rather work and continue to work. My my plan is to continue to be here at least at the high school uh, until they kick me out. Uh, it's a, just a tremendous place to be. I've taught some of your, your uh, children. I've seen some of your children play uh, sports here. And so I just wanted to talk a little bit about how we would support the com community overall, because we do recognize how important it is to maintain a strong relationship with the local businesses and, and, uh, and the local organizations that are here, and we want to help them out. I see that every day as a, as a teacher, as a uh, athletic coach, the amount of support that we get from community members is how we operate a lot of times at the school level. Uh, for example, me playing tennis or coaching tennis, you know, we couldn't operate that program without the support of the community. We want to be one of those supporters. We want to help uh, the organizations and the schools that are, that are around. I pressed the wrong button again. Uh, so we do understand the importance of that. There's a variety of ways in which we will do it. I think, you know, one of the, the great opportunities because of the amount of fundraising that the local schools need is to provide them an opportunity to come out and uh, assist with maybe running a concession stand. We've had a lot of success uh, in our Gainesville parks with, with uh, doing kind of a profit sharing opportunity for them to come in. They work the concession stands, whatever we make, we split it. And uh, it's been very successful for the groups that have come in and do that. Uh, so I think there's a ton of opportunities for, for us to contribute that way. Uh, you know, as a member of the community, I, I do hear some, some complaints from community members at times. One of those is sometimes they don't even know a tournament's being played. I think one of our goals is to try to bring those people into town. A lot of them come in off Archer Road, they pull into the park, they play their games, they turn right, they head back to Archer Road. We need to get them to turn left. So how do we do that? I think a big part of that is to coordinate our events with a lot of the great events that we already have here. We've got the Watermelon Festival. If we can have a tournament at that same time, that's going to op open up a lot of opportunities. West Fest, the Fall Festival, all those types of things. If we can coordinate that, that's an opportunity to take those kids and have them come into town and do something uh, after it's all said and done. Just so you know, you are into your question time. Okay. Uh, I will certainly yield if you, got, if you have questions or I can, I, I just have a couple more points. Can you briefly summarize those sure. points in 30 seconds? The other thing is, I, you know, we need to, we need to get the, we need to get the kids coming into Newberry and visiting the businesses that we have, the restaurants and things. I think we would all strive uh, very hard to make that something that, that we can work with, whether we bring, I mean, we got the best food truck in Alachua County right, right down the road, bringing them out, uh, out to the park, things like that, so that we can get uh, those, uh, those businesses opportunities to, to make some money off of the people that are coming into town. 
Okay. Thank you, sir. All right, Commissioner <coughs> Glanzer, first to the mic with some questions. I have a question. If you um, want to direct your questions to one person in particular, let them know who in needs general, to In general, it's okay. Mic. Just, right. you know, I have just a couple brief. The, um, all three of you have full-time jobs. Who's going to run the park? As part of our proposal, we will actually have one of us work full-time at the park, and we have, we have that in place that will, will specifically will change jobs okay. from his current position to a full-time employee of ACR. So will, will. And one more question. Will Will. Will Will. And will one more will. question. The weaknesses in your proposal stated that uh, you're, be, you're new to the market and the resource restraints that you have. Um, how, how long will it take you to ramp up to get in this market and figure out, you know, what you think? Um, to be honest, I think we already have. Mm. Yeah. So just we, in the we put that, proposal. yes, we put that proposal together in early June and it's July 31st today. And as we've mentioned, so we, have, we have sponsors lined up. We Good. have tournaments lined up. We have talked to Babe Ruth. They're, they're, they're ready to go. And so we think we've, in a month and a half while we were waiting for this meeting kind of kind of ramped up already yeah. and so. one more quick one then i'm sorry and will you have adult programs in your in your you know event um, planning ideally mm -hmm. yes okay um the fields themselves aren't really deep enough for adults but we do have a proposal on how to alleviate mm -hmm. some of that at the least expensive way possible Thank you. Mm -hmm. okay other commissioner questions for acr Commissioner Martin. Thank you all for your interest in the city uh, to begin with. Uh, I wanted to know if you are going to uh, cease relationship with the city of Gainesville or are you trying to do both? Uh, how is that uh, relationship kind of on your radar? To, to be honest, I think that they're symbiotic relationships. Um, we, you know, Right now, Will is currently not on the board. I'm the current president. I do have a term limit on that, so I won't be president forever. We do have term limits. Um, and our kids, we, you know, we live in Gainesville. That's where our kids play, and so I can't imagine we won't stay active in Gainesville Youth Baseball. Will it be our major focus? You know, we obviously have to make sacrifices to make sure that we have time to run a, a, a paying business versus our volunteer services and still maintain time with our family and you know, our, our paying gigs. Mm -hmm. So there's. There's no intent to see salt ties there. And to be honest, Gainesville, Gainesville Youth Baseball and Gainesville Fast Pitch are uh, ready-made clients for us, so. Okay. Uh, you are currently uh, maintaining the fields uh, at Gainesville Youth Baseball? Uh, the city of Gainesville does some minimal maintenance. Okay. For the most part, we maintain the fields, yes. Very okay. diplomatically stated. <laughs> Yeah, it kind of was leading into my question about uh, equipment and what's available uh, to work on these fields, for instance. In, in terms of what we own yeah. personally? Do you actually own equipment or anything like that at this point? Me, myself, no. We do have access <laughs> to equipment. Okay. So we, it's, it's not a major concern for us. We have, we're, okay. we're well connected in that. Okay. Um, I got a couple others, but I'll. Other commissioner questions? Usually take Dr. Hurstum just a few seconds to formulate his question, so that's why I'm, I'm not moving on quickly. <laughs> commissioner Hurstum, go ahead. All right. Um, I'd just like you to maybe elaborate on, the, on, in your proposal, you make the statement that preference was going to be given to users that are going to replenish the tourism development tax. Can you, uh, in your proposal, mm -hmm. you said preference will be given to those, those groups. Can you elaborate on what you meant by that? So basically, groups that are going to come in and put heads in beds. I mean, we know that the funding for tourist development tax comes directly, no other way other than heads in beds. So a tournament that is going to be a three-day tournament requiring two nights stay would take preference over a local tournament, Gainesville Youth Baseball coming in where there wouldn't be any heads in beds. I mean, the ultimate goal of Champions Park is to replenish that tourism development tax. I mean, that's the contract with the county is that we are doing that and that's why the requirements are there. And so in order to manage that and maintain that and make funds available for the next time we go and ask for more money from the Alachua County Tourist Development Council, that we can go in and establish, we can say we are putting heads in beds. 
Um, with your role with the Alachua County Tourism Development Committee, um, you said you're, you, you didn't indicate if there was a term limit for that. There is not a term okay. limit for that. We serve two year um, terms and then that we're appointed by the county. So I either get reappointed or I don't. Do you anticipate any conflict of interest with that uh, in running this if park? I, um, if, if we are lucky enough to win this bid, I have an appointment with the county attorney to clarify if there is a conflict of interest or not. It could just be that I have to recuse myself from votes that directly impact Champions Park, but I, I do expect that if there is a conflict of interest that I would step down from that position. Okay. okay. Commissioner Farnsworth, did you? No, Commissioner Martin, you had a couple more. Did you want to get those in? Uh, sure. A little over three minutes left. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, on kind of the SWOT analysis, looking at strengths and weaknesses uh, for you, uh, your group, uh, I noticed that uh, some of the stuff was a little bit cut and paste uh, off the internet. To, as most SWOT analysis are. <laughs> uh, and I just wanted to have you kind of expand on a little bit of mm -hmm. uh, just really what what your gut is on what you're bringing to the table. I, I will tell you that the three of us are together very intentionally. It, this wasn't just three buddies sitting over a beer that decided to do this. We, we all bring something very specific to this table. And to, to be quite honest, we're, we're really not even necessarily personal friends. We're, we're business acquaintances in terms of Gainesville Youth Baseball. But between what I bring to the table with my administrative and financial skill set, what Will brings to the table with his knowledge of sport and sport management, what Burford brings to the table with his connection to the community and his love of taking care of fields. It's weird. Um, we, we, all, we all have a specific piece that I think turns us into one group that can manage everything. I mean, I, it, it would be very difficult for one person to have all of those skill sets. Um, I think it, I, it's, it's very intentional that the three of us are doing this together. Any other questions from the dais? Commissioner Hurston, one last one. Um, you know, currently you're not a formalized business. And you said in your proposal that we we be... uh, we apply for our LLC. Okay. Well, you've got a, a minute and twenty seconds or so left. You alluded to, uh, I think it was Will alluded to some concepts for the other forty acres. Did you okay. have an idea of concept that you, you? I know it's early, and you guys haven't don't have a lot of familiarity necessarily with the park and that forty acres, but anything off the top of your head that you would throw out there? I, I will tell you that we are very closely watching how the county progresses with their um, plan for their fairgrounds and that indoor facility. We're watching that, that too. That, the amount of revenue available, if that is done right, and to be quite blunt, I don't think the county's doing it right right now, um, that you could very easily turn Newberry, Florida into the centerpiece of sports in North Florida and South Georgia. It's, it's, it would be a no-brainer if we could get an indoor facility there. The indoor track would be full from December through March. The closest indoor track to us is in Alabama. That's how far you have to go from South Florida if you want an indoor track. Their cheerleading competitions keep these places full constantly. We've got the volleyball and basketball. I think a multi-use indoor facility, assuming the county drops the ball, would be the way to go. All right, thank you. That's perfect timing and just ran out. Well done. Again, I would add my gratitude to Commissioner Mars. We thank you for your interest. We thank you for your enthusiasm and, and giving us that presentation. It's wonderful. Uh, we appreciate your time. Thank absolutely. you. Absolutely. And you, you're welcome to stay till the end, but if you'll just step outside with the other presentations, and I believe we have a staff member sitting out who can bring in champions park is that right mr manager yes sir okay <coughs> all right we'll give the commission just a minute or two to finish making any notes on your working sheet for acr
I want to thank the chamber for being so quiet and respectful during that presentation. I know we can continue that through the night. <clears throat> so who we the way we've got 30 minutes on the clock. Uh, you guys can split it up between whoever you would like to talk for the first 20 minutes, and then we have 10 minutes set aside. I'll let you know when the 20 minutes is up, and if you want to wrap up any last points you have to make before we move into questions, that's perfectly acceptable. The little light there on the podium will start blinking yellow when you have three minutes left, and I'll, that's just to, there is a, a clicker. Did they walk out with it? There it is. Uh, and you might need to get a little tutorial on that clicker. It seems to confuse lots of folks. Um, and when it, when it starts blinking, you got three minutes left, and hopefully we'll be in questions, but that just kind of lets everybody know that wrap up any last questions that you have. Yes, you sir. guys have any questions before we get started? No, sir. All right, we got the clock ready. All right, begin when you're ready. All right, good evening, everybody. Uh, most of you know me. I'm Michael Spina, Park Manager for Champions Park, Newberry, Florida, LLC. Um, Chris, uh, Chris Simmons is going to start us off tonight. Uh, she's our new park administrator. And uh, I want to start with uh, thanking all you guys and ladies for the opportunity to be up here tonight. My excuse me, my first time up here. Um, I just want to start tonight with a little bit of history. Um, Nations Park opened with its first tournament, and it was held in June and July of 2012. A little bit of shameless plug, that cute little kid down front was my son Trent. He played as a pickup pitcher for the South Carolina Dirt Dogs that week. They went on to win the first championship. It was a pretty big deal for a local kid. We all know it was hot. We all know those walls were awful, but we were hopeful. We believed in the promises. Many of us knew the man, and many of us knew what he had accomplished in Cooperstown, New York. The average citizen didn't know were the details of the park's origins, and maybe some of you as new commissioners today may not know. Nations Park was built with grant money to be used as a premier travel baseball facility. Turf infields, every kid's dream. No taxpayer dollars were intended for this project and that's still our intent today. The city of Newbury partnered with Alachua County and received $7 million of grant money which were generated through the city's bed tax. The city's received another grant from the Department of Economic Opportunity for over $700,000. So great, we're still good. No city funds are still being used. But here's the catch. The city of Newbury was bound to the interlocal agreement with the county to host 11 tournaments each year and create new jobs. The city of Newbury Parks and Recreation and Nations Park, the current manager at the time, simply just did not meet those requirements. Even after receiving an extension on the due dates well into 2014. 2015 brought no new events to the park either. So here's where the city now became liable to repay that $700,000 grant money. Recognizing a need for change, the city voted to seek out new park management. Now mind you, this is without a contract in place yet, but we went to work. We spent $400,000, excuse me, $40,000 of our own money in good faith before a contract was ever executed. Brad Carmen, the newly appointed city parks and manager director and other staff members approached Michael and Trip Norfleet to see if they had interest in managing the park. After careful consideration, the city voted to enter into a management agreement with Champions Park, Newberry, Florida, LLC in the summer of 2015. Extensions were granted and again, we went to work. You can see from the slides above, these are from 2012 when the park first opened and in 2015 when we took over. While the park sat essentially empty without regular maintenance for almost three years, it required a major overhaul. The design was determined not to be conducive to the Florida heat. The walls were in awful shape and the grounds were in even worse condition. But we had a vision and we believed in the same concept, so the walls came down. Dugout doors were cut, shade cloths were installed, new sod was laid. The irrigation system also needed work. One paragraph and a few pictures simply do not do justice to the money spent or the hard work and money put into bringing the park back to the standard for which it was intended. The process took a couple of years for the basic repairs and it's an ever ongoing work in progress. These are some of the improvements that were made. But with limited resources and hard work, we are proud to show you these new recent pictures. Okay. 
The first tournament was held in November of 2015 and it generated 716 room nights and approximately $3,500 in bed tax revenue with a total estimated hotel economic impact of $70,000 for our county. This is only hotel revenue. This does not consider the money spent on gas, food, or entertainment while the families came to our areas. Our restaurants were full that first weekend and they continue to feel the direct impact on each tournament weekend. The park began to see real life in 2016. A full spring season was scheduled and over 4,400 room nights were purchased by attendees. The, econ excuse me, the economic impact grew to over $450,000 in the first half of 2016 alone. The park has seen continued growth with a total hotel economic impact over $3.24 million through June of this year. The park alone has brought in over $140,000 to the bed tax revenue in just the 36 months since we've been operating. All grant requirements were met by the end of 2016. Events were held in excess of the minimum requirements and the new job requirements were also fulfilled. The city was no longer in jeopardy of having to pay back that $700,000. All of this was completed on a skeletal staff with limited resources as a brand new facility. In December of 2016, the city and Champions Park, Newberry, agreed to establish a repair and restoration account funded solely by Champions Park, Newberry. The city is prohibited from making a profit from the park, so these allowed the city to hold these funds in trust, basically, for the use of the park. We agreed to pay 5% of gross revenues from tournaments and 20% of other revenue to ensure that the park remained self-sustaining and did not cost the city or local taxpayers any dollars. In 18 months, we've deposited over $31,000 into that account. Again, remaining committed to that the park will never be the financial responsibility of the city or its citizens. For the past 36 months, we've been solely responsible for all park and field maintenance, mowing, trimming during season up to three times a week. Oops, sorry. Okay. Fields require spraying routinely and fertilizing is on schedule as well. And as you can see from the form shown above, it is very intense and very detailed. This is completed monthly and reported to the city. Not only are the fields monitored, but the structures and the exterior grounds as well. We currently own all equipment necessary, including tractors, mowers, sprayers, vacuums, golf carts, concession stand ovens, rollers, grills, coolers, refrigerators, freezers, and office equipment. We intend to continue to self-maintain the park with no assistance from the city, their staff, or equipment, ensuring that there is no financial expense to the citizens of Newberry. Okay, now my kids. All the hard work not only paid off with the satisfaction of knowing that the city was no longer financially responsible, but we were awarded the small town market venue of the year for 2016 and 2017 by the Florida Sports Foundation. The past three years have not been easy and we are in no way perfect. In April of this year, I joined the, park as staff or joined the staff as park administrator. While focusing on rebuilding the facility and programs, we recognized that we were lacking administratively. There's always room for improvement. I believe I bring the experience and skills needed to complete the management team. We've also contracted with a new CPA firm. We're working with Beecham and Edwards, and we're working with Cindy Hardy, their lead CPA. She and I will be working together and we will be responsible for timely financial reporting. We've worked hard with the city's new Parks and Rec Director, Travis Parker, to ensure improved communication and reporting. We've discussed plans for future reporting, how it can be more automated, thus lightening the workload for the city staff again as they have to then in turn report to the county. Michael's gonna go over our relationships now, our community efforts, and what we see for the future. You have any questions at this point? Just have any. Clarification question at this point? Nope. Good timing. You're right at 22, just under 22 minutes. So you got 12 minutes to go forward. Okay. Questions. Sounds good. Take your time. Um, <clears throat> the park has seen continued growth over the past three years with minimal marketing as we have been focused on infrastructure and the actual facility itself. Um, now that the park renovation is almost complete, um, depending on the, the cages to be complete, we are looking to expand further into the sports markets. The park design uh, with interchangeable mounds now, the softball, we can interchange mounds on the softball field now. When we first took it over, uh, there was no softball mounds on those fields. So we then put softball mounds in. So we are now able to host softball tournaments, all ages from eight to 18 years old. Um, in the fall of 2017, we partnered with PGF 
is a softball hosting uh, organization, and they held two one-day tournaments. PGF Softball is a growing organization based in Huntington, California. Uh, PGF intends to expand and host additional tournaments throughout Florida uh, in 2019. We also partner with the USA Softball out of Atlanta, Georgia, home-based, uh, I just uh, home-based in Atlanta, Georgia. Also another new partnership, adding consistent softball events to our schedule with adding, will add increased revenue as well as exposure while maintaining the travel ball intent. Um, everything that we do at the park, it's always keeping in mind heads and beds. Um, always travel ball, travel ball. We want to bring people from out of the county into New Bay. Um, and that's what the park is intended to do. Um, as you can see, UTSSA has done a letter of intent, um, has already submitted the letter uh, for the fall of 2018 and spring of 2019. UTSSA is the nation's leading travel ball baseball organization in the country. Um, our strong relationship with UTSSA has continued to grow over the past three years. Uh, because of my relationship with UTSSA, they agreed to come back in Newberry after deciding to seek out after uh, other venues several years ago. Um, UTSSA has had uh, success. UTSSA has also decided to come back in March of 2019 and bring one of their biggest tournaments they hold all year long. Uh, it's called the North Super NIT Tournament. Uh, it will uh, it'll bring 96 plus teams in. Um, that's over 2,800 bed nights to our area, which will bring an estimated hotel revenue impact of $375,000 or more. Um, and the bed tax revenue of over $18,000 in just one weekend alone. Uh, we, we appreciate the value of our long lasting relationship with USSA and we want to thank Scott Rutherford, Florida Assistant Director, uh, for being here tonight. As a part of our written uh, submitted proposal, um, we submitted three current local references. We were the only applicant that all three of our references responded when contacted by Travis Parker. Uh, we appreciate the support of Adam Anderson of Best Western, Brian Roundtree, Athletic Director of Newberry High School, and again, Scott Rutherford, UTSA Baseball. Uh, com community involvement. All of us at Champions Park believe in Newberry. Uh, we believe we have a responsibility to give back to our community. We live here, we worship here, we work here, shop here, our children go and grandchildren attend school here and participate in local recreational sports. Champions Park is a proud financial supporter of our community. We have awarded scholarships to Newberry High School graduates, uh, sponsored a variety of fundraising events, organized Christmas gift drives, where all the gifts were distributed locally, and we do our very best to spend our dollars locally. Uh, one example is our relationship with Growers Fertilizer here in Newberry. Uh, we, we purchase all of our insecticides, fertilizer, anything that goes out on the fields from our local fertilizer company here in Newberry. Uh, Champions Park supports our students who aren't necessary athletes also. We sponsor and support the Lotchville County Youth Fair Livestock Show. We are excited to hear that the Youth Fair is coming to Newberry. Uh, we most recently sponsored the Newberry Lions Club Rodeo that was just uh, here in Newberry a couple months ago. We also take pride in knowing that we provide employment to our local youth as well as community service opportunities required for Florida Bright Futures and other scholarship programs at Newberry High School. Uh, we are very proud to call Newberry our home. The future is bright for the city of Newberry and Champions Park, Newberry, Florida, LLC, but the work doesn't stop. We need more hotel beds. Um, we need additional parking at the park. Um, we need the water and septic system needs to expand. Um, and these are all amazing things and, and issues to, to face today. I mean, it really is. Um, I believe in five, six years ago, if we'd have thought about that, it probably wouldn't have been an issue. Um, but now to see that we need more parking and, and more um, expansion of the water and sewer system, that's a huge problem to have. And that means we're getting people into the park. Um, 
Bright the obstacles we've already overcome to, together, a continued relationship between the City of Newberry and Champions Park Newberry Florida LLC will only bring continued success to the project at no additional cost to the citizens of Newberry or city staff. We are set up and ready to go with a new startup delays, no new startup delays to the beginning of the fall season. A continued relationship between the City of Newberry and Champions Park Newberry ensures that the business continues to grow with a renewed commitment to our community and sports tourism. Our partnership has proven successful. We accomplished the intent and the goals established by the city and the county when the project began the previous management under the direction of the city of Newberry Parks and Recreation at that time could not. Champions Park Newberry has hands-on experience and proven success, success history. I'd like to go over the maintenance of the park and, and some of the big things, um, you know, People have all these great ideas and want to do all these um, these things out at the park during the week, you know, 24-7, seven days a week. The biggest issue that um, you look at is the wear and tear on that turf. Um, the complex costs seven point something million dollars, um, so you might want to keep in mind of the turf. Um, with that kind of traction that's going out there at the park. Um, that's some things that we've talked about in meetings before, and uh, that's the biggest concern is, is the wear and tear on that turf because at the end of the day, um, it's a very expensive uh, deal. Questions? You got four minutes left on the presentation. Did the other member of your partnership want to make any comments? Trip. If not, I... I have to, is he making up his mind? I can't see him back there, so is that a no? Um, before we open it up for questions, I just have to say I'm very disappointed. Uh, the Panther Walk, which Champions Park is a platinum sponsor of, didn't make it onto the slide. It uh, is. Uh, we are a platinum sponsor. Terrible oversight. Uh, you, you <laughs> thank you. Hey, see, I appreciate that. Yes. And with that, I will open it up Commissioner Coleman. Um, <clears throat> how, how, how are you planning, and this is really going to you, Mike, I got one for you too, but how, how are you planning to work with the rec department? What, that, that seemed like a, a big thing in the past. I mean, we, we, we got a new rec director and, you know, uh, well, I want this here at my park and uh, how, how, what, you got anything in mind that, that, that y'all two can, you can work, work pretty good with here? I believe me and Travis Parker work very well already. Um, the biggest thing is, you know, it's baseball and softball. You know, we don't want to take the numbers away from uh, the rec side during the spring. Um, if Travis is, I think we've talked about a little bit, we would be interested in running uh, the travel, or not travel, well, the rec fall league in the fall. Um, since Newberry Rec does not host one, um, we would be interested in doing that. But uh, during the spring, um, Newberry Rec would run their Newberry and softball. And I've already reached out to Travis, and we've already talked, and uh, I would be more than happy to help him with that. And uh, Ms. Chris, um, you're going to, um, so pretty much I guess you're going to be there full time. Uh, I know you own some other businesses. Right, right, right now it's probably a part-time position. Right. Um, we contract out the financial reporting to um, our CPA firm, and we went with a new CP CPA firm. Um, they're based in Chiefland. Um, they handle some other Newberry businesses, so we're very confident with them. Um, but as far as the reporting, the actual monthly reporting, it'll be a joint effort between Michael and myself. Um, I'm not going to go out and do the maintenance logs. <laughs> it's hot. Um, but, and I've I work with Travis now already and have for the last couple months. So um, we're probably looking at 15 to 20 hours a week during season. Um, and just to, if, if we can, to back up just a minute, just to clarify on that fall rec league, what Michael was talking about, when we are interested in doing a fall rec league, we're interested in partnering with the city to do that, not just to do it on our own. Um, some of the ideas that we had were to, you know, baseball fields are not utilized during the fall, so we would let them practice on those um, city fields and then hold their games and such on the weekends so that we, you know, keep to a minimum the use of that turf. Um, you know, 
the practice is when it's going to get torn up the most because you've got a team out there practicing two and three nights a week opposed to one or maybe two games on a weekend that include two teams. So we are keeping that in mind. And, you know, that's not even a done deal. That's just a suggestion and something that, that we were starting to talk about until we got to this process. Uh, to the uh, – I can – I'm not sure that you guys are – in the same email threads, but I can attest that since uh, Ms. Simmons has come on as an administrative partner, the email communications has increased significantly. Uh, so just to let you know that back and forth uh, factor. Commissioner Coleman? I'm sorry, Commissioner Glanzer? We just <laughs> left Commissioner Coleman. Commissioner Glanzer. <laughs> excuses or delays in reporting without blaming your CPA or blaming your computer or bl I, it just the most embarrassing night I've spent here in my tenure as commissioner was when we had to face the CPAs with no information and all we got was they wouldn't call us back and I'd like to hear from Mr. Spina on this yeah I mean uh, we've we move forward we've hired an administrator that way there's no the, the, the emails are coming through to you um, and you know, we've, we've reached out, we got a new CPA. Um, okay. And good. so we're moving in the direction that uh, you guys asked us to do. And, and I have to ask, because I've been asked that question too. Yes, ma'am. Um, because you had, in your proposal, you answered that you did have a lawsuit and it's been closed. But um, when you mentioned that, I looked into it and I found that it did, uh, had something to do with your financial relationship with someone. So because you're going to be involved in community's money and our money, can you explain what that was and how it was settled so that we can understand it wasn't something that was not, you know, um, that would be detrimental to our city to have someone with that happen to them? Does that make sense? <laughs> All I want to know is, uh, was the loss to... The business partnership that, that separated Okay, so there was pull no... The uh, pull the microphone. There was a business so partnership that separated. Okay, yes. and, there, and everything is cleared up about mm -hmm. that. Yep. And the last thing is real quick. Um, you mentioned earlier that you, you were not so enthused about all the extra tournaments that people really wanted to have because they were in tear. But don't, don't you get entry fees for those? And if you have those entry fees, isn't that good? Because then you have the money to fix the wear and tear. That's what it's all about, having more tournaments so you can have more money. Or am I missing something? There. Um, That's all I have. Are you talking about travel ball? Or are you talking about rec ball? Which one are you talking about? Sure. You, you, I just heard you say that you really people want you to have a lot more tournaments midweek, but you don't want that so much because it tears up the fields. You, but if you have entry fees with those extra tournaments, that should pay for the maintenance down the road. Um, I think yeah, you're confusing tournament and practices. Okay. So you're wanting to do practices all during the week consistently out there. That's a wear and tear on the fields. Um, Okay, other commission questions? Commissioner Herson. Oh, Commissioner Farnsworth. Okay. Uh, kind of curious, how many uh, tournaments are you proposing per year, both uh, baseball and softball? Um, since we took over, there, we've never not met uh, the, the requirement. Uh, we've always held 11, 12 tournaments per, uh, per year. The biggest thing with baseball and softball is um, you're looking at probably one softball, one baseball a month. The issue is when you start having a baseball and another baseball organization come in with travel ball, well, those two compete against each other. So then you're looking at your numbers dropping, all right? And then that means you're getting under the 40 team that you need to get to. You have to have 40 teams per tournament to meet the agreement. So what we would like to do is hold uh, two tournaments a month and have those numbers high instead of having two tournaments and have under 40 teams, which it doesn't even meet requirement. So you're talking you about 24 tournaments a year then? Yeah, you're, you're looking at 24 to 30 tournaments a year, yes. Do you have any idea how much uh, revenue that would generate for the city, to the city, um, over a five-year period? We put, if you look in the proposal, there's a budget in there. And what we did was we, we increased it at 20% each year because that's what our standard growth rate has been. The issue that we're facing right now, and, and if you look back at 2017's fall numbers, and it's going to be even worse this year, when you bring travel ball teams into the area to play ball, they need to stay somewhere. We have, what is it, five or two additional home Gator games 
There's just no hotels. We can't put them anywhere. We can schedule tournaments every weekend, but if you don't have anywhere for them to stay, you can't bring them in. So we tried to give realistic numbers. We tried to give realistic, <clears throat> assuming that we, we grow business-wise, you know, we're, we're gonna get a few new hotels in Gainesville, and we are always, everybody's always hoping to have a new hotel put right here in Newberry. But even so, you're bound, there are certain limitations. You know, we're here with reality, with three years of experience, with three years of run rate, knowing what those obstacles are. And I think Scott will tell you with UTRIP, when he tries to book a tournament here and it's in the middle of September or October and it's a home Gator game, there are no rooms. So that's kind of where we, you'll see that, you know, people can throw pie in the sky numbers at you and they can tell you that they can run, you know, there's 52 weeks in a year and we're gonna come in and we're gonna run 36 to 40 tournaments a year. It's not reality, it's not, it, it just can't happen at that numbers. And that's why we've tried to focus on keeping those tournaments to larger tournaments on weekends where there's not a conflict with the hotel availability in our area and grow that way. And when you look at, you know, back to your question as far as the revenue, if you're running rec ball tournaments, rec ball people don't pay gates. They don't pay, they bring in coolers full of Gatorades. You can't stop them. You can put a sign up that says no Gatorade or no coolers, but you can't stop them. So those rec ball tournaments don't even generate the revenue that people expect or anticipate. It's not the same industry as travel ball. So I mean, I, I hope that answers your question, but like I said, the budgets are in there. Um, I don't have those specific numbers right here in front of me right now. We, if that's something that we want to come back and address, we can. Okay. Commissioner Barnsworth, that, that's all. Commissioner Herson, you were yeah, next um, in line. I think at least in the packet I have, I've only got one budget that's the pro forma budget for 2019. And, and so if there was a missing page or maybe I am missing, yeah. Well, those are the profit and losses for 2016 through 2017. So I'm, I'm looking forward, you know, at that 2019, you've got itemized expenses listed there, but only a single source of income. So I'm curious how, compared to the other proposal also I looked at, they broke down their income, whereas I've got a $210,000 single line income. Well, that, okay, that's something else that we talked about. Um, when we did our initial contract, Mike can tell you that, Part of the ways that we were supposed to pay in that 5% was gate fees. So when you work with a large organization like UTRIP or P, um, PGF or any of those larger groups, they collect the gate fees. That's standard in the industry. We do not collect those gate fees. So what we did was we bumped up our um, field rental fees. So instead of charging 30 or $35 a, fee, a, a field, we bumped those up to 40 and $45. So the bulk of our income comes from those field rentals and we charge them per field Per game, so the larger the tournament, the larger your rental fee is to those to those um, tournament directors. And then we also have concession stands. Now we've looked at doing other things like like adding in some rec ball events and things like that. But so far, we've always been told that those were against that we have a you know basically a non compete with the city of Newberry. We're trying to work around that where we can bring some more of that in. But the bulk of our revenue is from. Um, Rental, we call them rental fees, but they're tournament fees to those state and uh, tournament directors. Okay. So that, that, that's not evident in, in the proposal, so that was does why that I asked. It, I mean, it, it does okay. now, yes, okay. thank okay. you. Um, and then I had a follow-up question, and you, you've got to that, you know, the, the, the fees to the city, I understand the 5 and the 20%, but I had to back calculate to get to those numbers that must be included in that 210. Okay. Um, so what's the best way that we get around our, you know, you stayed in there, the limit, Newberry has limited amenities, hotels, how are we gonna get around that? We've looked at trying to do, you know, some other things with, with sharing fields with the city and bringing in some more rec ball events. Um, we, we've tried to do that, we're looking at, that's one reason why we've expanded into softball. Um, trying to offset softball tournaments are typically um, one to two day events. They'll start late on a Friday night, they'll be, or Friday afternoon, they'll be back. Literally softball games will start at seven in the morning, they'll go to midnight. So if you have a team who doesn't travel, or they travel but they can get here early Saturday morning and play all day Saturday, then it's still considered a tournament because we have so many teams involved, but they're not requiring those beds. So that's one reason why we've really reached out into the softball community and trying to bring those in. Um, 
PGF partners with UF. They'll come in during um, softball season. They'll do a one-day tournament, and then um, because they're already here in town for that UF game. So we're kind of piggybacking on those hotel rooms where they're here to watch the softball game, but they're also going to bring their kids and play at our tournaments. Commissioner so Harrison, we we're, we're about, about one minute. Would you yield the floor to Commissioner Martin? I know he has a question. I'm sorry. want to make sure we, everybody gets a chance. Uh, two questions. Um, we can go late, later. Uh, do you think your relationship with the staff can be repaired? And is there enough money to be made out there that this is going to be worth it long term without the city putting money in? Yeah, I believe the staff. I mean, I believe our relationship with staff can be repaired. Yes, no doubt. Um, I mean, I think it's improved tremendously within the last couple of months. I mean, if you'd ask, I mean, I, I, that's what I believe. I don't hold grudges, though. So okay. I, I uh, must be in a okay. 15 seconds to answer the money question. <laughs> Do you think you... Do you think uh, there's enough money out there to be made that it can cover well, I, itself? Well, I do. I absolutely do. Um, I believe that the, the park itself is self-sustaining. When we get to the point where we're going to need turf, we're going to go to the county. That's, that's, we're, we're, the whole intent of Champions Park was to bring heads and beds into our county and to bring that bed tax into our county. In 36 months, we've put over $140,000 into that account. So in, in what? Yeah, there's a hundred in 36 months. The, the bed tax alone has generated almost $140,000. So with that $140,000, after another three to five years, when that turf's running out, that's when you turn around, you go back to the county, and you look for more grant money. Thank you, ma'am. We appreciate it. Thank you for your enthusiasm and your presentation, your commitment, and what you've already done for Newberry. We appreciate it. If you wouldn't mind stepping outside, and we'll have staff bring in our third presentation. You guys go ahead and take a couple minutes to review your notes and your numbers on the working sheets again for that presentation. Come on in, Rad Sports. We're just finalizing the notes from the last presentation. As we get your presentation geared up, looks like it's there to go. In case you need a tutorial on that little clicker button, which gives everybody a fit, uh, Miss Judy can help you out over there. I cannot. I've, I've never actually looked at it. <laughs> The way we have done it, I will tell you, we're, we've got 30 minutes on the clock. I'll tell you when 20 minutes is up, and we'll be into time for questions at that point. Uh, if you need a few more seconds to wrap up your presentation before we move to questions, that's perfectly fine. At three minutes to go, your light will turn yellow. That's three minutes left in the, in the entire presentation. Uh, and I'll remind the commission and, and you that, that you know, we're, we're coming to the end. So are there any questions from Rad Sports about how we'll work through this. Our microphone is very sensitive, so if two or three of you get up there, if you would, remember we are recording this, we'll publish it live, or we'll publish it later. We're not showing it live right now, but we want to make sure folks who watch it on YouTube can hear. And with that, are you guys ready? Yes, sir. Is commission ready? All right, begin. Mr. Mayor, uh, commissioners, I uh, want to thank you all for this opportunity to present. Uh, why we are the right management team for the operations out at Champions Park. But before I get started, I just want to take a moment to thank uh, Richard and Anthony, the two partners for Rad Sports, for uh, taking a chance on me. Uh, contrary to some, some people, I mean, there might be some of you up there that think I'm just a hired gun. I'm not a hired gun. I actually, I, I called around, I talked to, I talked to a few people, um, I did my research. I, I reached out to them because I really think that, that they have what it takes to, you know, to, to get this park back on track. Um, when I stepped down from the dais, all you guys know I was looking for a job. So this, this was an opportunity. I thought it would, it would work well. Uh, owning a business here in Newberry uh, and being this close, uh, I just thought it was, it was a really good fit. Um, I was, I was asked to, to open things up, so 
I'm going to open things up by uh, introducing our CEO, Mr. Richard Blaylock. Uh, most of you guys know him. For those that don't, uh, I could, you know, spend a few minutes <coughs> talking about all the things he's done. But if you look at what we have as far as Parks and Rec, you can see. I don't have to tell you. You can actually see because his fingerprints are all over the city of Newberry during his time as Parks and Rec director. Um, so with that, I'd like to introduce uh, Mr. Richard Blaylock. Welcome. Welcome back, I should say. Thank you, Mayor and Commission. It's great to be back. Um, so just a real quick synopsis on Rad Sports. Uh, when I left the city and went to Sarasota uh, to, to begin a new career, um, things didn't go as designed. And, and uh, long story short, the president shut the company down. and. I spent the next years um, traveling around. We went to Hampton, we went to Charlotte, we went to Canada, we went to Iowa, we went to Omaha. We traveled the country and looked at different markets, different things, what programmings were being successful, where the markets worked, uh, what facilities, where the mistakes were made. And then I came back and I formed Rad Sports because I felt like that, you know, based on past history, that, you know, we could make a difference in the way that, that a lot of this stuff works. Um, as you guys know, I'm, I, I feel like I'm a visionary and program uh, person. And what I needed for balance was I needed a black and white commercial um, uh, businessman, and that was Anthony Homer. So we partner. Uh, he's my vice president of development. And as you can see, um, he's got a lot of experience in commercial real estate, business development and managed a $43 million real estate uh, portfolio that had over 400 uh, employees in it. So we balance ourselves. We, we look at the market, we come in, we do the programming, and then Anthony sits down and analyzes it and, uh, to make sure that it's gonna work for the company. So at that point, I'd like to bring Anthony up. Anthony will carry, since he is the Vice President of Development, this is what we consider in the development stage. So Anthony will carry through most of the presentation. Thank you very much. Thank you. And welcome. Good evening. Is this good? Perfect. Uh, first of all, thanks very much, Jason, for inviting us to be a part of this team. This is definitely an opportunity for us to kind of showcase some of our uh, strengths of marketing and the networks, and especially the familiarity that Richard has with the Florida sports market specifically. Uh, Richard, we kind of glazed over it, but he is pretty much the guy that pioneered the um, the bed tax and sports uh, public private partnerships in Florida. In fact, when we go around the state and we talk to other counties and municipalities that are looking for opportunities to get into the sports tourism market, uh, they they look at the model of this facility, uh, the Champions facility in in particular. And there's been a lot of pioneering that's already gone on. And actually, we continue to kind of follow that model around. Um, and later on in the presentation, we'll talk a little bit about some of the other facilities and the synergies that we have there and why we think you should select the Rad Sports team. Um, first of all, I think it's important to note that we are a Florida company. There's a lot of companies right now in the sports tourism space. Um, it's been a growing, growing market since Richard and I teamed up. It went from a $5.9 billion uh, a year business to today they track about $11 billion a year in sports tourism spending. So one of the strengths that Richard brings is that state and national network, that connection, not only with the Florida Sports Foundation, uh, the local groups, but at the national level. He was a keynote speaker at the National Association of Sports Commissions. So again, as we were traveling the country, he mentioned going up to Canada, up, up to Hampton, Virginia, and we were consulting on a lot of these projects. It was always amazing to me how many doors would open just with his name. He could shake a hand. He knew the officials there. And uh, you didn't have to build a rapport. The rapport was already there. On top of those state and national networks, though, are those community relationships. Uh, I don't think I don't think anybody um, around this area would need the introduction to, to Jason and, and Richard when it comes to building those community relationships. It's definitely a strength. And what hopefully I and Erica bring 
are the recording and reporting, uh, especially on the accounting side. Um, I'm not an accountant. I'm a numbers guy, but I use it for analysis. I rely on Erica and our accounting staff heavily to kind of keep those records so that we can kind of look back at it over the last 90, 180, or annual basis to figure out what we're doing well, what we're not, and where hopefully we can continue to develop. Uh, as, Richard, <clears throat> as Richard developed the company, our one goal, we put this mission statement together basically in the first few days of us uh, launching the company. And our goal is to develop every athlete for success through training, education, and programming. And this truly is, uh, has been our guiding mission statement. Uh, everything we do has that in mind. Uh, we take a holistic approach, not only to the facilities that we manage and the athletes that we're developing, but also to the business. So on our team, uh, I think you, you saw earlier, Richard is our CEO. Uh, I'm the VP of development. I also handle the back office. So our back office handles all the accounts payable, accounts receivables. And so on the, on the uh, left-hand side where you've got the Rad Sports corporate, that's where all of our back office happens. And the back office, if you look at, uh, uh, at it on the wheel there, we're really there to support the local director. And the idea is to free the local director from, I don't want to call it mundane, um, but really that, that time-consuming chore of handling, you know, putting payroll together, figuring out where AP needs to go, where AR is coming from. And so we act as the support to the local director who then is freed up to use their strengths. That's their, their networks in the community to be out uh, either on the field or visiting schools, whatever they can better be doing with their time. On the other side, where uh, local maintenance is, there always has to be a balance with the, the maintenance crews, right? Um, uh, it's, it's no matter what business it is, whether it's a, a, a shopping center, a hotel, an industrial yard, whatever we've ever managed, we never have enough money for the maintenance guys because they basically want to do everything all at the same time. So on that side, on accounting, where they interface with the local maintenance is, is to look at it over a five or 10 year budget. And we look at what that capital cost is gonna be. And we take that and we, we, we work with them to identify the areas that you need to uh, focus on immediately. Obviously, if you have something that's gonna prevent you from bringing in a big tournament, we'll shift funds and try to make that work right away. But otherwise, we try to look into the future on a five to 10 year basis. So that's our, our corporate structure. Um, at Champions here, what we're looking at on the startup staffing side is, is a little bit different. Uh, simply because there, you already have an existing facility. Um, however, w there's a lot of unknowns. I think what we're looking at, and again, this is all, this is all projected, nothing set in stone at this point. But this is how we see uh, the, above, the above staffing to fulfill the project. Um, obviously, Jason would be our full-time facility manager, and then under him would be the camp coaches, concessions, sports directors, and then he would handle the academy rentals. Uh, in a market like this, where you have a very, we only have really one sport that we can go after, and it's very seasonal and cyclical, um, really will only have one full-time employee. Everybody else will be contracted, try to keep that variable so we can either ramp up or pull back hours as needed so that we can control that payroll. Uh, but more importantly, it allows us to find the right personnel uh, to make sure that they're immersed in the rad sports culture. Uh, this is very important to Richard when we first set out. There's I mean, on any given day, you can pull out the, you know, the sports section of any newspaper and see you know, some athlete at whatever level doing something you know, kind of ridiculous. Uh, but it all does start at that youth level where you're, you're ingraining in them not only the value of their teammates and the coach uh, of themselves, but the people around them that are supporting the team, the players on the field, whether that's the statisticians, you know, the coaches club, whoever that is. 
So we believe strongly there needs to be a change in the sports culture today. And this is hopefully our contribution to changing the culture of tomorrow through the kids that are coming through our programs. We believe that it takes a holistic approach. When you're, when you're developing an athlete, any athlete, not only do you want to develop them in different sports, but also as a human being, um, which is easy to say, it's a little harder to do. And so going back to our mission statement to develop every athlete for success through the training, education and programming, what we try to do are find those directors and coaches that are gonna follow our model. Uh, so, so it's very important, no matter what rad sports program you walk into, it's gonna be the same mission statement, we're gonna have the same ethos, and they have to follow the same training curriculum. Um, I, I've been fortunate enough as we're going around the country and, and locally here, and we're trying to get these developments up and running to piggyback on the work that Richard has already done. Uh, literally, we have, we have manuals for the different sports. So when we go into a program or we go into an area, for me, all I have to do is the demographic work to identify what the needs are. Um, and, and Richard, you're a lot better at the programs. So I'm gonna let you give the overview of, of the programming that you would see for this facility. This is when we could get in trouble with our time limit. Uh, <laughs> this is my passion. So uh, some of you have, have been fortunate to have some kids uh, that have participated in some of the program that we've done. So what we've done is to, to fulfill our mission is we developed three levels. We've developed a prep level, i.e. recreational level, competitive level, um, and then uh, an academy level. And it's a minor league system to where we can plug kids in that, that, that are on their skill level and be able to move them up and down. You know, we've got parents that that may have a child that they only want to go out and practice once and play a game and just have the experience. And then we have some that may want to be a little bit more competitive but not into the travel every weekend and that type of stuff. And then you have the ones that really want to, really want to be after it. So basically, as you'll see a little bit later, you'll see a, a, a schedule of, of how we do that and implement it. And of course, as you climb that ladder, the more, ladder, the more intense uh, we get. Uh, with, with the different things. Our goal is to build a profile on every, every child that we get our hands on, and that profile will be not only their athletic ability, but grade point averages, um, and, and a whole bunch of different things that, that develop them as an individual. Um, so that's, you know, that's kind of on the programming. Uh, like I said, I could talk to it forever, but you know, I don't want to run out of our time. Um, and, and one of the other things, and, and did you have a club slide up there? On the yeah. Okay. So one of the things that we've done and we'll implement here, um, whether we implement it in the small space we have at Champions or work with the rec department to maybe get some classroom space, but one of the things that we've developed is a sports administration hospitality program for kids that may not have the athletic ability or have the competitive desire, but we're going to teach them the business side of sports. So, so again, when we look at sport as a whole, we're looking at we're looking at all the programming, the sports, and then also how can we implement the kids that, that you know, we can teach aspects of it too. So that's a, that's a little bit of the programming. And when we talk about developing the, the athlete as an individual, that's a little bit about what we're talking about. Um, and usually when we come into a market, we're looking at what type of facility to build. Uh, so typically what I'm looking for are the demographics of the markets that we want to reach. Um, in this scenario, it's a little bit different, so, but the same program model applies. Um, so usually when we're going in, we're, we're trying to figure out what facilities, like, like this one is over in uh, Pasco County in the Wiregrass, Wesley Chapel area, figure out what the unmet needs are. Um, in this case, we know what we're working with, so really we're just programming strictly uh, baseball and softball. Um, I, I got to say, though, uh, you got to compliment your vision because it, it is a world-class facility. And I think the foresight to have built the facility and the size and, and where you are in the market demographically, especially if you're trying to reach regional visitors, you're, you're right on that I-75 corridor and you're picking them off before they get to your competition down south. So demographically in the region, you are uh, definitely in the right spot. Um, 
As far as, as far as our goals for the partnership, when we looked at this opportunity, uh, it's threefold, and that's to work uh, in the park, the city, and the community. We feel those are the three areas that we have to satisfy uh, the, the expectations in the park that's managing for the long term, planning for future growth and transportation, and then marketing for events. Within the city, it's really realizing the original goal of this park, and that is the economic impact, and then proving that value through transparency and reporting. And then in the community, making sure that they are part of that economic impact, that we're pushing the economic impact to the city businesses, that we're uh, scheduling events and controlling the calendar to make sure that they get the maximum, uh, maximum benefit. And so we know that the most important goal of a facility isn't just for the money for the city, but it's also for the local residents. So making sure that they have use of uh, this very high class facility. Also, there's, there's a lot of existing resources that could be accessed. Uh, the, it's, it's, it's one thing to say that there's existing resources. It's something totally different to be able to know who to pick up the phone and call and talk to, to talk to them about the events, um, whether it's existing uh, contracts or agreements that they already have that fall through on events, or existing resources at the local state uh, level for bid pools to be able to bring bigger sized events in, or even just marketing resources that you can piggyback off of uh, to kind of stretch that marketing dollar and bring more attention to the park. And that's really, um, hopefully we can get into that in the Q&A because that's, I mean, that's its own, that's its own hour long presentation on what we could bring. Um, <clears throat> just to give you a high level though of some of the personal relationships we do have with the different groups, um, these, are, these are just a few of them. Our goal is to bring in that mid market. The, the idea is to not go for the big flashy uh, or, or um, high name and high impact tournaments, but to have a constant steady churn of that mid-level market so that rather than trading it off for the events that only happen three or four times a year, we're doing the ones that happen 13, 15, 20 times a year so you keep a steady flow of traffic. And the uh, park is perfect for those ages because that's an unmet need where you're, you're not getting the high level or high profile events but really it's the high number ones with lots of participation. Um, uh, personally, I think this is gonna be a great complement for the relationships that we have at some of the other indoor facilities where there's a trade-off in seasons. It gives us a little bit more um, to talk to them about. If we say, hey, not only can we do basketball, volleyball, dance, cheer, you know, ping pong and archery, but let's also talk about your softball, baseball, and fast pitch uh, events as well. So for us, we see this as being right in our wheelhouse with these relationships. Uh, one of the relationships that we weren't able to include in the original package is the uh, Alachua County Hospita Hospitality Council, who were gracious enough to uh, write us a letter of support. Um, we do have it on file if you want to read it. I'll, for the sake of time, I'm just going to kind of skip on through that one. You have about 30 seconds left. To and the Babe Ruth. Um, we do have... Our plan is to incorporate the accounting and reporting for the property level and the city. There's a six month ramp up period that we see between now and full blown management. Those are the steps which will be included in the slides that we've left behind and I can come back to this. And that takes us basically to full management and operations. Well done, sir. You, Thank you. You managed to make it through those last few slides very concise. Well, I didn't make it through all, all of them, of them yeah. but we'll stop here. <laughs> yeah. Well, there's also an opportunity to uh, ask more questions at the end. All right, Commission, do you have uh, questions for Rad Sports? Commissioner Glanzer. Thank you for your presentation. And I, I, you know, I have to say, I can't go without saying thank you to Richard for his vision. Um, without you, these, you know, we wouldn't have champions. We wouldn't have Easton. And so thank you for that. We wouldn't be here tonight. Newsflash, though, when uh, Nations Park at the time opened, there was a slow ramp up period and um, it left a bad taste in the citizen's mouth. And I want once and for all publicly to explain, somebody to explain what had happened. It wasn't the fault of your management, but it was outside um, 
conditions that cause that because I want people to feel good about this company if they are chosen okay? because that's one thing that I, I, I just keep hearing it so basically in the beginning um, there was a vision and everybody knows Mr. Pursuti was was the one that came in and and as the park got closer to opening more and more opinions and more and more of we should do it this way and we should do it that way and 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 um, uh, and difference of philosophy became a political football and and how it how it all ramped out at about that point is when is when I left so basically you know I made the statement when when the bed tax was raised in front of the county commission I made the statement that you know the park's going to create the economic impact. The park is going to have tournaments. You know, we're going to be able to do that. My passion for the park and where I think the park has failed is the Monday through Thursday, the local citizens. That's where the impact's going to drive for the city of Newberry, to be able to put the local programming in, bring the local kids in, the area kids. They already know where Newberry is. They already know where all the restaurants are. You know, so you're creating that avenue. And, and Anthony mentioned it, you know, at, at – at the point, and, and again, I'm not here to throw anybody under the bus or any of that type of stuff. At the point of coming to completion, basically I was backed out of the picture. And the way that we see it is, is again, with our Pasco County project and some others, we've got some buying power, we've got some leverage to where we can work with USSA, AAU, elite, US Elite Softball because they want to compete with AAU. So we got some leverage and buying power to bring events in. So I think to answer your question, I think too many people got their hands involved. I think too many people got involved. And that was one of my frustrations and, and one of the reasons why I left. Um, and I think we can turn that around. I think we can go back to the original vision of what it was. Uh, we already have you know, mapped out and planned out week-long events. We've, tried, we've figured out how to plug in some of the holes. Because again, one of the things that we've seen around the country and one of the things we're up against here is is it's seasonal so what do you do when this, when when baseball and softball season aren't happening and this is the this is kind of our layout of you know league play run in september to november we've got opportunities for camps in christmas time december fall programming from february to may you know that's all local stuff that's stuff that's driving the local economic impacts and then the camps, like I don't want to cut you off but I want to make sure everybody <laughs> gets a chance to, to ask a question was that your, the only question you had Commissioner Glanzer okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I again I could, I could go he gets passionate that. I know yeah. yeah other commissioner questions for Mr. Blaylock if not he can go right back into that passionate speech Mr. Commissioner Farnsworth uh, just curious how many tournaments baseball and softball do you think you'll have each year I think once we once we get it rolling, I mean, we're going to be able to get into about 12 to 16. And again, where where we see where we see for the park, and again, that would benefit the city of Newberry, is like when Gator football games are going on, and we can't bring in we can't bring in people to stay in hotels. So that's when you have your local rec ball tournament. That's when you have your local all star tournament. That's when you start creating events for people that would come in, drive in, play, drive out. And again, those, that's the people that know where, where everything's at. That's what benefits the, the, the local impact. Everybody knows they stay on Archer Road. I've heard that. You know, we built this and Latchwood County is getting all the benefit. You guys gain the benefit by having the more local type activities. So when Gator football, when the drag races are going on, that's when we're looking at how do we do local stuff. Commissioner Farnsworth. That's all. That's it. Commissioner Hersom. Um, a lot of the, the proposal, at least first part of it, was, was talking about construction, new construction, new construction, where the request for proposal was running the park. So where's the idea for new construction coming from, and how are we going to do that? Well, well, as far as the city of Newberry doing new construction, or? Well, it's unspecified in the proposal, so well, go I mean, on the wall and see. I think, I think, again, with the way our structure is, okay, with our corporate structure and what we do, our company is a, a sports management, sports development, full range of, of, of everything. So if we get in and, and you guys want to move forward towards looking at expansion on the additional 40 acres and that type of stuff, we, we would have the expertise to come in and, and help look at the demographics and be able to say, okay, 
this is what would fit best, in our opinion, on that 40 acres and how it would continue to drive uh, towards it. Our hotel partner, we're already in con conversation. We will have a hotel in the Pasco project on property adjacent. And we're already started communicating with them about the possibility, you know, if we can ramp this thing up and get it to where we believe it can be, that they have an interest to possibly look at coming on, on with us. So not only we have the, the programming aspects, the redevelopment aspects, the new construction aspects, I think we have a pretty good pulse on what the needs are, where the current trends are, and, and how to assist in that area. So we, we have another expertise that we can lend outside of the park. Okay. Follow up, Commissioner Erson, or was that it? Um, that's it from that. Um, just looking at your budget, um, this is a real technical question, but I want to, you know, the, the sharp, I was looking at your budget, your sharp decline in cost of goods sold, I mean, that was a pretty good aspect, and then all of a sudden it goes down. What's, what was driving that? Uh, you're talking about in the, in the presentation versus in, in the, the proposal, proposal. in the proposal, yeah. there was the decline in the cost mm -hmm. of goods sold is the question. Yeah. Uh, if you look at in, in our updated expense, and again, this is, this is based on the information that we have today. And obviously the more information we have, the more we can refine that. Um, youth leagues actually increase quite a bit. Part of that cost of goods sold is uniforms. Okay. And so we, we basically moved that over. So the youth leagues part, went up okay. commissioner martin to uh, piggyback on what commissioner uh, herson was saying i was curious i didn't really even get the flavor that the proposal spoke to newberry uh, and i was wondering how old it was uh, there's some pretty dated information uh, one of the references has been dead for two years uh, so i was wondering how you guys could uh, address uh, what I see is kind of a shortcoming in the proposal itself. Uh, I believe in the references that you're speaking of, that's Ms. Mr. Pursuti. Yeah, the, the references, uh, I think we were able to complement that. There, there's also Mr. Mr. Ashby, and there's a couple of other references in there where those you were unable to contact, is, or is it simply the question as to the material that's dated? Well, when I started reading it, it, as he was talking about it, it talks about a lot about construction and uh, some other things. And as I started going through, the references were old. It was talking about volleyball. It was talking about a lot of other things. Um, quite honestly, I even got the impression that uh, Rad Sports was uh, promoting that Easton and Champions was done by Rad Sports, where quite honestly, Richard was an employee and it was conducted, and those projects were done by the city of uh, Newberry here. Right. Um, so, I. So those are just those are just issues for me when I was reading through. I didn't know if you wanted an opportunity to speak. Okay. To them. Uh, typically, when we're, we're responding to RFPs of this kind or any sorts, they are they're a wide range of activities and requests, and so it is it is a a big template that we start with and then we customize it for the presentation. Um, I, I certainly hope that the, the time spent on the financial plans as well as specifically on the operations staffing side uh, was also noted because those are really the areas that we concentrate on a market by market basis. And that's almost perfect timing as the clock winds down to the end. I want to thank Rad Sports for the presentation and for your interest in Newberry and for uh, coming and answering these questions for us. Uh, I'm going to give the commission just a couple minutes to re review their notes and finalize your working ballot sheet. Um, Mr. Manager, can we invite the other folks back in before we open up for public comment? Um, they've been standing outside for a long time. Yes, sir, we can. Thank you. Give a second for everybody to come in and find a seat. Now that all three presentations are done, we will open up the floor to public comment. You'll have a three minute time limit on public comment. At 30, as long as the light is green, you're fine. At 30 seconds, the light will turn yellow. And when it's red, we'll need to close public comment so that someone else 
Mr. Have Mayor, I missed a step? No, uh, the request is, uh, or would you prefer that we go with a live broadcast from this point forward or just wait? We can, we okay. can at this point, we can go live now. So if that's an easy button to click, Amari, go ahead and click it and we'll, we are now live? Okay, well, if you're just joining us live, we have Matt now completed all three presentations from the Athletic Competitive Recreational Sports Management, Champions Park of Newberry, and Rad Sports. The commission is finishing uh, of the notes that they took on those three, and we are moments away from entering into public comment. Should we talk about public comment? Absolutely. That's why you have, a, we're going to take public comment first, uh, then the com we'll close public comment, then the commission will enter into deliberations, uh, and then they will finalize their score sheets after the public comment and after one more chance for the commission to ask any questions. All right, has everybody had a minute to fill out their scorecards and finalize their notes? Okay, we'll open up the floor for public comment. Does anybody have a comment they'd like to make? Please make your way to the don't be shy. We will ask you to state your name into the microphone for us so we have it for the record. Good evening. My name is Dr. Maria Kelly, and I'm here to speak on behalf of Mike Spina as a parent of a travel ball player, but also as a community member in the city of Newberry. As a parent of a travel ball player for over the past four years, I have participated in baseball tournaments in a variety of venues across the Southeast United States. I can personally attest that Mike Spina has created a venue at Champions Park that is organized, safe, efficient, responsive to player and parent needs, and also clean. In addition, as a physician, I can also attest that I have personally witnessed safe and appropriate first aid to unpredictable yet expected baseball injuries at Champions Park. I am also impressed with Mike's leadership of the park's significant transformation. He took an underutilized baseball venue that was hot, underventilated, underutilized, with poor sight lines, children and parents hated playing there, and transitioned it into a venue that is open, ventilated, has better viewing to watch your children actually play, and now attracts teams and tournaments from across the Southeast United States. And my child has played there quite a few times. This transformation and his leadership of the park is what has created the Champions venue as really one of the preeminent sites for travel baseball tournaments in Florida. Now, as a citizen um, of Newberry for over 10 years, I know we all want Newberry to be successful, and our city has really emerged as a leader in sports recreation. Champions Park for travel baseball, Easton for archery, we have Gatorback for motocross, and I think it is imperative that we continue this positive trend. To accomplish this goal, we need to have recognized names with connections in the industry that they're serving, in critical positions, and ideally, those people need roots and ties directly in our community for the longevity and the sustained commitment that we all want in Newberry. We have seen, that we have seen what unsuccessful leadership can do for this venue. We have already watched this park sit, unused, the wood rot for years before Mike took over. Mike came in, a Newberry citizen with a strong connection to the baseball world, and recruited baseball, softball, and recreational ball tournaments almost immediately. He brought in recognized leaders, such as the USSSA, Perfect Game, and Baseball Youth, that's baseball, I'm not as familiar with softball, to host tournaments at Championship Park. His leadership brings visitors monthly from across the Southeast United States to boost our local economy and highlight our wonderful city. So in summary, I hope you will recognize that Mike Spina has demonstrated successful leadership of Champions Park, despite his self-acknowledged obstacles and the expected growing pains of taking over this facility, he has created a successful venue and a positive reputation for Champions Park. I ask that you remember all of these points as you make a difficult decision tonight that could risk returning our city down a suboptimal leadership path when Mike Spina has already proven himself as a successful leader of this venue. Thank you for your time. Thank you, ma'am. Any other public comment? Welcome. How are y'all? My name is Sarah Beck. I am um, speaking on behalf of Champions Park and my support of both Mike Spina and Trip Norfleet. 
I myself am a business person in this community. I have voluntarily served on various boards and committees throughout the community, including being chairman of the personnel committee at First Baptist Church Alachua, member of the children's committee at First Baptist Church Alachua, <laughs> secretary of the Meridian Behavioral Healthcare Board of Associates, and secretary of the Santa Fe Babe Ruth Baseball League. I have also served on the Irby Elementary PTA and SAC committees, the Alachua Elementary PTA and SAC committees, the High Springs Community School PTA, and I've taught first and second, second grade Sunday school at First Baptist Church Alachua. I say all of this to highlight how important community giving, hard work, and family are to me. When it comes to the operations of any business, organization, or committee, I believe it is important to keep these values at the forefront of your decisions. Firsthand, I have witnessed Champions Park and the operators exhibit these characteristics throughout our community. Champions Park has supported local youth in the last three years of the Alachua County Youth Fair and Livestock Show through their presence at the annual events held each year in March. Champions Park has not only been the buyer of several local 4-H and FA, FFA members' livestock, they have also generously given add-on donations to our area youth and their projects. As for the facilities, and from a baseball parent's perspective, and having played in many ballparks around the state and the Southeast United States, I have never been in a better run facility or cleaner facility than Champions Park. In fact, we often text back home how great it is to play at Champions. We are fortunate to have it right here in our backyard. The park boasts traditional values during baseball tournaments and has the feeling of family when you are on the premises. The fields and facilities are maintained beautifully and the operators take pride in this upkeep. When it comes to baseball and networking, Mike Spina has connections throughout the country. This, I firmly believe, has contributed largely to the success of the park being run by anyone else. Sorry, since he and Trip Northfleet originally took on, um, has contributed largely to the success of the park. I cannot imagine the park being run by anyone else you will not find a more dedicated and hardworking group of people than those that have cared for and flourished this park to what it is in the last four years. Cars being parked down Southwest 30th Avenue due to a sold out tournament was unheard of prior to Mike Spina and Trip Northfleet assuming operations. Again, speaking volumes to their commitment to the community, hard work, and family. Thank you, I fully endorse Mike Spina and Trip Northfleet as operators of Champions Park I believe there is no better candidate at this time to manage the park, thus contributing to the continued economic growth and development that this park brings to the city of Newberry and the surrounding areas. Thank you, ma'am. We appreciate it. Any other public cart? Mr. Clark, did you get it figured out who's going first? Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. Good evening. Uh, my name is Scott Rutherford. I'm the assistant state director for Florida U-Triple-S-A Baseball. Um, you guys have a very hard decision. Those were three very detailed presentations, and, and as a, a guy that does this for a living, um, I, I don't envy you in the decision you have to make. I don't know the guys from RAD or ACR, so I can't speak to them, and I won't, I won't try to. I do know Mark Burford. I think he was here a minute ago. But um, other than that, I don't know anything about them or their organizations or what they do. I do know that USA is the leader in the state of Florida, not by a little, by a lot. Um, we started the relationship with Champions Park several years ago on a phone call that I received from Mike Spina. After one week of a tournament up here, I wasn't sure I wanted to continue it. I wasn't sure he knew what he was doing. I wasn't sure the park was gonna succeed. But I can tell you several years later, Mike has called my phone, texted my phone all hours of the night asking my opinion, wanting to get his finger on the pulse of travel baseball in Florida. Continues that up for the last three years Literally every week I get a text or a call from Mike and when we're in tournament season, it's three or four. We, we constantly go back and forth. I can speak to that. Mike wanted to learn the business and the business today as opposed to what it was back then, totally different world. And I, would, I don't want to do business with anybody other than Mike Spino. And the reason is, is Mike wants to learn the business. Mike wants to understand why it's not smart to run a tournament the week after one is run in Lake City. He wants to understand why teams won't play back-to-back -back weekends. 
He wants to understand, obviously, during Gator games, we're not, during the fall, we're not going to get a lot of tournaments. I think the Gators have seven or eight home games this coming fall. We're only able to do, I think, two or three tournaments this fall up here. Mike wants to, wants to understand that. Four years ago, it made no sense to him or I. You know, we didn't understand the Gator Nationals was a big deal up here. I'm not from here. I'm, from, I'm down south. So it didn't make any sense why we couldn't get hotel rooms. Actually, Mike taught me that one. So I sat in my state office meeting this morning down in Sarasota with every state director. And I can tell you that every state director that knows Mike gets the same phone calls and emails that I do. None of the other presenters has reached out to anybody in the state of Florida to ask us what the trends are, what's going on in the state of Florida. So I explained to you this because it sounds like maybe there were some some issues in the past with communication. I heard Commissioner Lanzer say that. I know for a fact that this group back here is learning. They're wanting to learn. They love the city of Newberry. They love this park and they want to make it successful. I can speak on behalf of, of the Champions Park group that I believe that they can do it and they have the relationship with USSSA to back. Thank you. Thank you. We appreciate the comment. Other comments? That's a lot of sheets of paper you got there, Mr. Clark. <laughs> you told me I had 35 minutes. <laughs> uh, Miscommunication. City. I'm not here to throw anybody under the bus. Uh, don't know. I do know some of the folks, but don't know their company. So I'm not here to bash anybody. What I am here to say is I have a personal uh, relationship with Mike, and he has come to me for some leadership things over the years, which he's instilled. He's a great leader. And he's probably the only guy y'all got that's a true ball player. He understands it. He understands the teaching. He understands everything it takes to make children successful out there. And although there was some problems in the past with uh, the accounting and some things that was, has brought this to this light, Mike has brought this abs Champions Park to the forefront everywhere that it's been seen. So I'm telling you now that he needs a second chance on the contract to rebuild his trust with you, and the numbers don't lie. And it ain't a pie in the sky. He didn't get up here and give you big numbers and big pretty slides, and it's not a pie in the sky. The numbers are the numbers. He give it to you straight. And I think that's what you'll get. He's got somebody in the accounting side. I think you'll get exactly what you need. I tell you as a contract, and you all know this, you get a contract together, you hold someone accountable, I think he's there. He has learned, he has grown, and he's ready to be successful and make this city successful and make Champions Park successful. So that's what I got. Thank you all. Thank you, sir. Other public comment? Welcome. Hi, my name is Beverly Lassiter. Um, I'm not from Alachua County. I'm from Union County, God's country. I'm just kidding. <laughs> and um, I just, from my experience, um, I was very involved with baseball and softball. I played softball in college. I also coached high school softball for years. I was president of the Babe Ruth in Union County for years. My son has played travel ball for several years now. Um, from what my experience and what I'm here to speak of is, Every experience that we've had at Champions Park has been a good experience. Everyone there is it's very clean. When we go to tournaments down south, like others have said, everyone always wants to come to our park. When they do come to our park, I have been there before to help, like just be standing by the gate when other teams are coming in or just up there, you know, communicating with other people. And immediately you hear parents and you hear them telling their children, you're about to play in one of the nicest parks, you know, in the state of Florida. You, you have no idea. One of the other, you know, positives, we don't have to worry about rain. You know, don't have to worry about the mud. And people love, love to come to Newberry to play. I have experienced the softball, and I have experienced the baseball. And I do agree with what other people said. Softball, the girls are tougher. They'll play six games a day. So we don't have to worry about the hotel, you know. They'll play all day. You can bring them in, and they will bring plenty of teams, you know. And it's a lot to do with their pitching arm as well, not really the toughness. But no, I don't will, back down. From that now. <laughs> I will say, though, that my experience, we have we are familiar 
with your city of Newberry now because of coming over and playing. We've eaten in your restaurants. There was plenty of stuff I didn't know till I was here. I didn't even know where this building was much, but I did. Um, but so much has been brought to our attention, and there's several people that do come from our area, several people that come from Mayo, from Lake City, all over just to come here, and they've learned so much about your beautiful city and so much about the park just because of what Mike Spina has done. And to bring the, the beautification of it, you will never go there and you will never see sunflower seeds laying around. You will not see things nasty. They take care of the park. They're constantly out there mowing it on their own time and doing everything possible that they can. So in closing, I just would like to say that I do believe they do a great job and they do believe, I believe that they bring the city of Newberry out to the surrounding communities to get people to come. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you for the kind words about our community. Other public comment? Give you just another second to build up the courage. Okay. Seeing no public comment, we'll close the public floor and we will enter into deliberations back with the commission. If any commissioner has any further questions about the presentations, comments that they'd like to make, now would be the appropriate time to do so. Commissioner Martin. Uh, this actually was more directed to staff and where we were on the, the tank project and or the cages. Um, Mr. Mayor, the um, water tank project is underway. The tank is on site. Water systems out of service. There was, um, how long, two days? Two days, we'll be back in service. We have to go through some permitting uh, with FDEP to get the bacteriological samples cleared. So we're maybe a week from having the water system back in operation. The, um, the batting cages are complete with the exception of artificial turf. I saw that bid proposal. I guess staff has prepared the RFP. I don't think it's been issued yet, but we anticipate it being issued shortly. Um, we are looking at that. I think with the tank that takes us uh, and the carpet, we'd have about $20,000 left in our um, ex uh, uh, the funds that were available to do additional capital projects. I think the next items on the list are some additional fencing uh, to help direct visitors to the right places for gatekeepers and potential um, bleachers, seating, those types of things. So we're, we're very close to spending the rest of our money in the county uh, is very good at prompting us about, hey guys, let's get this thing closed out. Does that answer your question, Commissioner? Mm -hmm. Any other questions, comments from the dais or any of the presenters or staff? Yeah, Commissioner Martin, I think Commissioner Hurston formulating one down there, so go ahead. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, <laughs> go ahead. I wanted to hear from staff um, going through reference checks, insurance checks, anything that was done on the proposals that you wanted to bring to our attention? Um, well, it's not knowing how detailed you got either, but. Well, yeah, personally, um, we, the way we did it was rather, we had a five or six person team, five person team, I believe. So rather than have every reference have to respond to five different persons with questions, we divvied them up. Uh, each one of us took a um, proposal and, and called those contacts and then we shared it with the team in our public meeting. And from, from what we shared, everyone uh, scored their proposal based on that feedback. So I think the general consensus was is, um, that, um, that when we contacted, uh, when we were able to make contact with folks, uh, they generally, um, had good things to say, as mo you would expect, references included in a proposal, uh, spoke to professionalism. Some, some of the proposals um, uh, were, uh, this reference can tell you about our business savvy, this reference can tell you about our sports management, and this reference can tell you about how, how we've done with tournaments. Others were more ge generic, and these are references that just we know all all together and I think one was just a this person knows me to be of someone of good character but I think that all of the references that we received were were generally positive Commissioner Hersom did you get that question 
formed in your mind? This might be a, a general question to, to staff and then maybe the applicants specifically who, who proposed some of this. You know, there were several proposals that, that talked about and presentations that talked about, I would guess, capital improvements and infrastructure improvements at, at the facility. What's that cost structure going to look like? Is that going to be on the city? Is that going to be coming out of the the city fees that they are paying in on an annual basis, or is that going to be the operator's expenses? It, well, the um, the fees that are paid to the city, as as one of the presenters noted, is the city can't make a profit, so we put them into a, an earmarked fund. Uh, it's intended to go more towards uh, replacement and renewal, uh, repl anticipated replacement of the carpet uh, at some point, the indoor carpeted areas, the indoor turf, uh, infield turf, or the nets. Uh, we have netting backstops or fresh coat of paint or new shingled roofs. There's actually a lot of roof area out there. Uh, we don't anticipate using those funds for new capital improvement. Um, we, uh, we refinanced the bonds uh, a couple years ago, and out of that refinancing, the city round up with just over $300,000 in funds that were spent on, on projects. Uh, most notably was the replacement of all the wood fences with chain link fences. So the city undertook that project, I think in 2016, I believe is right at $160,000. So batting cages are part of that. The water system, water tank replacement project that's underway right now. Um, and so we're now down to that last amount of money. But we do not have a revenue source identified for new capital projects. That would be something that we would talk with the park operator about, get a list, and then the commission would have some discretion about the renewal and replacement fund as to whether we might say, all right, 10 percent or 20 percent, or we may turn around and approach the Elytra County Tourist Development uh, Council to see if we could get a recommendation from them for new money. Just, just one last question then. Uh, how many years do we have left on our contract with the county? The, um, well, the funding has been paid off. Right. So there is no money uh, due. The, the bonds have been paid off. The city now owns the park outright. However, our contract with the county, uh, in terms of legal uh, responsibility for heads and beds and tournaments and, um, and those types of things, extends through 2025, if I'm correct. So these types of, um, I, it doesn't mean we can't ask for funding before 2025. It just means we'll have a reporting requirement to the county and we'll have a minimum number of reports and a minimum number of heads and beds until 2025. I think that read we have gotten from the county is they paid off our, our bonds uh, because they wanted to move forward with the Elytra County Fairgrounds project and they needed every cent of bed tax to make that happen. So. W the, the read we're getting is is until we figure out how the fairgrounds is going to go and establish more funding beyond what's going to go for the fairgrounds don't bother asking because we don't have funding so then after that seven year period though all things being equal we'll have no commitment to the county and if we would not ask for another cent we wouldn't have any commitment to the county in terms of reporting heads and beds and things like that and we would be free to do with the facility whatever we want that is correct. reap any benefit that we would like that is correct. Does that conclude your questions? Yep. Thank you. Commissioner Glanzer. There was a bid committee that you had. Is, and can you tell the public what the ranking was, the results of that committee, or is that um, public record? Yes, I can, but I may, I may have to um, refresh my memory. Um, and that committee was based on citizens? No, no, ma'am. The, the committee was staff. It was um, our planning and economic development director, it was our um, parks and facilities director uh, who also spends time being our utility and public works director. It's our recreation director, our director of finance and administration, and myself. So we all evaluated. Uh, I don't recall the specific scores. The same scoring criteria that you have tonight is the exact same that we utilized. And when we completed Dallas, the top ranked firm was uh, the top Highest just let Dallas come I'd up let here Dallas so we get it right. That. He'll know it better than me. <laughs> Good evening, Mr. Mayor and City Commissioners. Uh, the ranking committee ranked Rad Sports first, uh, Athletic, Competitive, Recreation second, and Champions Park third. Do you remember the point spread? 
I do not. I'm trying to find it, but I, I don't have it off the top of my head. Okay. Commissioner Glanz, was that? That was it. That That's was it. Any other questions or comments? Mr. Mayor, I, Mr. Manager? Well, I, I think that the, uh, that was a really good point to be made. At all. I would also note for the public and the city commission's edification that the RFP document clearly specifies that that ranking got three firms to this stage, but that it wiped the slate clean, and this board will now consider uh, each presentation based upon its own merits and the RFP document. Uh, you, you have latitude. And, and who you think would be the best operator for this park. Okay, if there's no further questions or comments from the dais, Mr. Glanzer, you, you've got one bouncing in there. I just, got, it just it, I don't know how to start this, but um, we had to terminate the contract with Champion Sports at one time. And I know this is a hard subject, but I just want to understand it because it, it worries me that we'll have these problems again. And I just don't want to, you know, have to tell the citizens, well, you know, that didn't work before. How, how, how are we going to get through that? Maybe somebody can help me because it's not, it's not personal. It's just the fact that this did happen. That term, that contract was terminated for specific reasons. And I just want some, you know, I know it's a wonderful program he has and everybody spoke so highly and I too, I love Mike Spina, but I just, I, this is one thing that I need to clear up in order to vote. I'll take a heart. shot at the answer to that question. I, I think, the first and foremost thing that the commission needs to keep in mind is that the proposed motion would be to authorize staff with whoever you rank first. So a lot of those issues, so no one is going to walk out of here tonight with the uh, contract. Someone is going to walk out here with the first shot to negotiate the contract. And then if that fails, staff will notify you. They'll immediately move to the second person that you guys rank. So. I think a lot of those contractual questions can be answered in those negotiations. So those types of questions, you know, this was the issue we had before. How do we re reconcile that? That would be the appropriate time to, to work out those issues. Does that, that do a, a fair job of answering the question? Can, can you respond to that question? Uh, no, <laughs> not yet. You can, you'll have another chance for public comment before the, it's over. But I have to stick to the agenda now. Uh, but don't write it down, Trip, so you don't forget it. But <laughs> okay. Any other questions from the dais? Questions, comments from the dais? Okay. Hearing none, uh, what I would like to do, and I know it's difficult when you have a chamber full of people looking at you, but I want every commissioner to be absolutely sure about the scorecards that you're about to fill out. So the first presentation was over an hour ago. You've got your score cards on the working sheet for that, and you've got your notes. I want you to take all the time you feel like you need uh, to go through those working sheets and then be sure that you're transcribing over to the final sheets the score that you feel comfortable with. We are not asking you to tally those. We've got two people who have two calculators that will tally those, but we do need to make sure that by the time you pass it down, you're comfortable um, with those score sheets. Remember, I need you to sign both the working score sheets, your notes, and the final sheet. There's a place for your signature and the valuation. While the, while the, we, you'll, you'll pass both of them in. If you could separate those up for us, that would probably be good. While the commission takes their time doing that, I would just ask the chamber to talk quietly amongst yourselves so they can focus and make sure they're transcribing the numbers over the way that they would like perfect time to use the restroom if you need to. Uh, but again, I don't want to feel, I don't want anybody to feel like they're being rushed. And, And Judy, could you, before you guys leave, could you confirm that everything has been signed? Maybe Mike could confirm that everything's been signed on the working and that they haven't left anything blank. Mayor, is there going to be any other question? I, I need to. 
you can you well after uh yeah go ahead as soon as we pass everything now we're going to be taking a 10 minute recess well you can go ahead and get a head start and i'm sure there's going to be a line Amari, if you could go ahead and, and cue up the clock to put 10 minutes on it for the recess for us, and we'll, it'll be an approximate 10 minutes. Don't start the clock, Amari. Just get it ready for us to go, if you would. <laughs> 